Welcome to Gary Clark Tech. In this recording, we're going to do something pretty cool. We're going to query a database containing customer reviews and use that data to display a star ratings graphic, which will display the number of votes which each star has received. And we're going to figure it all out using PHP unit and test driven development. If you like this video, it's part of a complete course that will teach you everything that a PHP developer needs to know. Click the link below to check it out. Before we get started, let me just say that I record in high resolution, so don't watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that works for you. Would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon and welcome. And so this is what we're going to try to produce. On the left hand side we have our star rating 54321 and on the right hand side we have the count for each rating. I decided what we're going to do for this one is drive out the functionality with some test driven development so we're having a nice rounded lesson and we get to use all of the things that we've learned so far. I've composer required PHP unit PHP unit and then in my chapter 8 folder I'm going to create a tests folder and inside of that I'm going to create a test class called collection test. This will extend um, PHP unit framework test case. I'll simplify the FQN here and then we'll start to write our first test. So I'm going to annotate it as a test with at test and then public function. I just want to give this a nice descriptive name to say that the collection class can count array values. As per usual I put some placeholders in here for my test steps just to keep me focused. For the setup I'm going to need a starting collection. Now we have a dev database and we know that that has a fixed number of review records in there so I'm thinking why not um, just query that and we can use those records for this example. If we planned on writing code which was going to add or change uh, the reviews in the database then maybe this wouldn't be ideal but I think we should be good to use what we've got. Okay so data equals and then wrapped in parentheses new review repository that I'm calling find for product and I'm passing in the ID of our one and only product. What we're doing here is taking the array which we get back from the query, passing it into a new collection class and we're just going to dump it out. So I'll run the test and I just want to see what we're actually getting back here. Okay this is looking good. We have a app model collection so that's right and then it has 10 elements which is the exact same number of records that we have in the database. So far so good. Now for the do something part of the test, basically my mission here is to take that reviews collection, perform some functionality on it and get a new collection back which is in the rating count format. We know we have five different ratings, five, four, three, two, one, so we're expecting a collection with five elements and the ratings will be the key and the count will be the values. This is how I'd like my code to work. So none of these methods have been um, written yet. I'd like to be able to first select the column which will be my subject and that column is going to be rating and then I want to chain on another method call on the end of that count values and this will count the number of individual ratings. If we look at the database we can see there are three fives, there are three fours, there are two threes, only one two and again only one one. In order to be able to chain those method calls like that, each method is going to have to return a collection. So that's something we're going to have to build into our design, so let's bear that in mind. Before we do anything else, let's just add our assertions. And so I'm just checking that each of the ratings is returning the correct count. Remember, I'm able to access my collection like an array because it implements array access. Let's test this now. Just go and grab the name of the test function. Okay, and our first error is undefined method app model collection column because obviously we haven't created that function yet. And so from this point forward, we're just going to let our test 
tell us what we need to do, what methods we need to add, and we'll retest and refactor and work our way towards the correct functionality. So this is my column method. It will take a string, which is gonna be the column name. As you can see, I'm specifying that I want this to return a collection. I'm just gonna show you some documentation here. In our scenario, our column is a property on a class. Now recall that our properties are private, so this probably won't work because it says here that only public properties are considered. However, we can access our private properties using the double underscore get, and what that documentation told us there was that if we are going to implement a get method, we also need to implement the magic is set method. Not a problem, let's do that now. So I'm gonna keep this um, magic get method fairly simple. We could check if the property exists, but let's just stay focused and uh, get this functionality in place. So for the is set, all I'm gonna do is use the PHP is set function to check if a class property is set with a name provided. And now with that in place, we should be able to access our properties as columns. So what I'm gonna do is return this, create from, which will create a new collection from an array which is passed in. I'll create that array by using the array column method. And as you can see, this returns an array, which is perfect. The first argument will be this element. And the second argument, of course, will be the name of our column. I think this is good enough to run our test and see where we're up to so far. Okay, so it's saying call to undefined method count the values. So we've moved on. That proves that the column method is actually returning the collection because I've actually been able to try and call another method off of that. Let's create the count values method now. And by the way, you're probably wondering why I'm not individually unit testing these things. That is an option and it's probably good advice to do that, but I just want to keep the lesson focused. And another small confession is that I don't always actually unit test every single method. If it's already been covered in a feature test, as in this case here, then often I won't um, test them, especially if it's something as small as a column method where I can pretty much look at that, know just by looking at it what it's gonna do and what I expect it to return. Say for example, it was a bigger method and it had um, conditionals in there, if, else, logic paths, then I'd definitely test it in isolation. But in this case, I think we'll be good the way it is. Okay, getting back to our count values method, just like the column method, I'm gonna return this create from, and instead of array column, I'm using array count values, which as you remember from before, counts the times that a value appears in an array. I've run the tests and I have five green assertions. So we're getting back the correct values for each of the keys. I feel a little uneasy though, because I haven't actually seen ratings with my own eyes. So let's dump this out and have a look and see if it looks like we expect it to do. Okay, our keys have the right values. However, if you look at the ordering, it's five, three, four, one, two. We want to display our stars as five, four, three, two, one. So I'm afraid we haven't finished yet. There's some work to do here. What I'm gonna do though first is just put an assertion in to say that we're not getting the array back in the 54321 order. So that's the array that I'm gonna check against. I'm gonna to need to convert my collection to an array in order to perform this check. So I'm just gonna add a, a little method on the end here to array, which is quite a common uh, method you'll see on most collections. And all you do is you just return the underlying array. So now in our assertion, we can call ratings to array. Let's go and run this test. And so we get green. So what that tells us is that we're getting the correct values for the keys, but it's not in the order that we want it to be in. Let's now write another test because I want to test out sorting a collection by key. Here are my steps, set up. What we're gonna need is a collection with the keys in a non-sorted order. So we can actually set up our collection in the format that it's coming back from the count uh, values method in the previous test, which is like this. So ratings equals new collection, and then we'll paste in our array. That's actually in order. So what we need to do is just go and switch these around a bit. So four, five, three, one, two. Okay, so we have a collection with the keys in non-sorted order. Now what we want to do 
is sort them. So we need a way of sorting a collection. In PHP we have a couple of methods for sorting by key. This one here, k sort, sort an array by key. Things to note about this is that the array is passed by reference, so it's not returning a new array. What it'll do is return a boolean, but it's actually going to mutate the array which is passed in. It's going to change that array. That's good, but this is what we really want. kr sort, sort an array by key in reverse order. This is perfect for us, and this is what we're going to use. If you examine the array object class which we looked at in previous lessons, then you'll see um, a lot of sorting methods on those as well. So, what we're going to do here, ratings, kr sort. Like I say, we're not obliged to return anything because it's going to sort the actual elements array. It's not going to create a new array from this method. Okay, there's our assertion. That's the array in a sorted order. Let's run the test and it should tell us what to do. So, collection can be sorted by key. Call to undefined method collection kr sort. Perfect. So it's telling us what we need to do here is add a kr sort method. Okay, public function kr sort, and we want this to return a collection. So have a think about that because the actual kr sort function returns a boolean. How are we going to handle this? We sort the elements, and all we do is just return this. So we're returning the same collection object. And because we return the same collection object, we can chain on other methods of the collection. So here's our KR sort method. This returns a collection, and then we can chain on any other methods from this collection. For example, we could chain on the two array method, which is just above. And when you return the same object, so you can perform this chaining, we refer to it as a fluent interface. Remember that because you probably see this used in PHP quite a lot. Rerun the test and we have one test, one assertion, all green. Let's run the whole file. Two tests, seven assertions, all green. That's perfect. So what we need to do now is take this logic and use it in our products PHP file. So what I'm going to do is just try and chain the whole lot left to right. We'll call column and then count values and then kr sort. So reviews, column, and we need to tell it that we want to just grab only the rating column, which is actually a rating property because it's an array of review objects. We're going to count the values, we're going to count the number of individual rating values, and then we're going to sort by key. Let's dump this out and just see that we're getting what we expect to get. Over to the browser, refresh, we have five elements, five, four, three, two, one, and the values are three, three, two, one, one, exactly the same as they are in the database. That's perfect. Now we need to display our stars. Okay, so I'm going to use the code that we used to display the reviews, and we can just customize this a bit and move things around. So let's drop this in here, and we need to remove our hard-coded star values for each ratings as. And we're going to need rating, which is the key, and count, which is the value. Behind the scenes, I've just sped this up, and what I've done is I've used a string repeat. This repeats a string a given number of times, so a rating of five will display five stars. So those should display on the left and then down here and I've put it in bold will be the count and that should display on the right hand side of the card. Let's go over to the browser. This looks good. Five, four, three, two, one stars and the counts are three, three, two, one, one. Perfecto. And there you have it. I hope that you've enjoyed this one. Why not reach out to me in the comments and tell me what made you watch this video? Maybe there's something that either myself or my subscribers can help you with. If you got value from what you've watched, then give it a thumbs up and don't hesitate to share if you want to help other developers like yourself. That's what good developers do. And finally, if you want YouTube to show you more of my stuff, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new material every few days. Details of my schedule can be found on the community tab of my YouTube channel homepage. I'll see you in the next one.